One of, the, one of the dimensions, one of the cardinal personality dimensions, there's five of them, you may know this, extroversion, which sure. is a positive emotion, and it's associated with assertiveness and enthusiasm. Yeah. And Trump is extroverted. Um, Definitely. Negative emotion, that's neuroticism, and that's the whole panoply of negative emotions. They all clump together, and people differ in their sensitivity to them. Agreeableness, that's compassion and politeness on the high end and more like bluntness and competitiveness on the other end and conscientiousness and openness which is creativity you're obviously high in openness you're entrepreneur you're a writer you're interested in ideas you're obviously creative but you strike me as someone who's very high in agreeableness compassion that's compassion and politeness is that a reasonable uh, is that a reasonable i think that's that's fair i think that's fairly spot on i would i couldn't have been fought fun. yeah i agree with you on that certainly okay okay so i mean i mean people are a little more complex than that i do have other sides to myself i do have a shadow side that is can be very aggressive and very i'm very competitive so it's i think on the surface i have that kind of agreeable personality for various reasons but yes would you describe yourself as compassionate empathetic very much so yeah okay so here's what to i'm a wondering fall, okay 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 so that's i'm very curious about that because one of the disadvantages of being high in agreeableness is that you're more likely to be a target for disagreeable types certainly so, and this is a really important notion so i was talking yesterday who was it with i can't remember but we were talking about Oh, yes, it was Andy. No, we were talking about the establishment of this, you know, utopian community in the middle of Seattle. The, the mayor described it and said, well, maybe it'll be the summer of love, which is extremely naive thing to think, especially yeah. because the summer of love blew up. And so and, you know, that's sort of a celebration of agreeable virtues. And so agreeable people are very generous and kind and they're not backstabbing and they're empathetic and they're self-sacrificing. And, yeah. and but there have been computer simulations, very sophisticated computer simulations by evolutionary biologists of what happens if you get agreeable people together. So imagine you have a population of people and all of them are agreeable. Yes. And so they're cooperating away. It's all very kind and nice. But if you put one person in there who has psychopathic traits, yes, he just takes over everything. Yeah. And so the agreeable people always have the problem of how do you handle free riders, cheaters, and psychopaths? Right. And you know, you might be utopian and say, well, those people just don't exist and they shouldn't exist and we shouldn't structure our societies that way, but that ain't gonna cut it because no. psychopaths are always 3% of the population. They vary between Definitely. one and five. And so if you're in a, so, so is it possible, I don't want to push this interpretation beyond its reasonable limits, but I'm, I'm wondering, you're, you're open and creative and entrepreneurial, and so that's not going to suit you for managerial or bureaucratic jobs, no. you don't have the temperament for that. No. And then you're agreeable. And so is it possible that you encountered more of that bullying behavior, or like a disproportionate amount of that bullying behavior and so forth in the jobs that you had? Is that I think that's very possible. And yes, and I'm also very sensitive. So I'm kind of, you know, react a little bit more than most other people might react. But the odd thing is, is that the book came out in 1998. And it has resonated with lots and lots of readers. I've sold millions of copies yeah, of the yeah. book. And so there's, some, I think a lot of people share the trait that I have. Oh, there's I no mean, doubt about it. That, uh, that's, um, it's not uncommon I mean, they, what I'm talking about at all. I mean, the, the great manipulators in the world, the, the 3% that you talk about, and I think that's about the right number, they don't need this kind of book because they're born that way, or they're not born that way, but they learned at the age of three or four or five how to begin to manipulate, and their whole personality was kind of formed over these sort of tactics. They don't you know, need a book like to, that. What seems to happen there, we studied that, you know, so yeah. if you take two-year-olds and you group them together, Two-year-olds, by the way, grouped together are the most violent of human beings oh, in age-matched groups. Okay, so yes. among two-year-olds, years, two year olds, <laughs> there's a proportion of them who will spontaneously kick, fight, hit, bite, and steal. Yeah. Okay, they're almost all males, and it's yeah. about 5% of the males. Now, most of them, this goes to nature versus nurture, say, most of them get socialized out of that by the time yes. they're four. Now, they yeah. would be more disagreeable boys. 
So they're not empathic and compassionate, polite by temperament, but they can yeah. still be socialized. But a proportion of them don't get socialized. Right. And they tend to be life course antisocial types. Yeah, I think um, Melanie Klein, she looked at infants like that at that age, and she said that there was something called the greedy baby. And the greedy baby was like sucking the mother's breast so hard, it could never get enough milk. It was just so greedy for more and more. And she saw that as the child got older, that kind of greediness and that kind of selfish behavior only got worse and worse and worse. And she would like try and see if you could track that to someone who got who became older it was a type and she ended up thinking that there was maybe a genetic component to oh this. yeah well there is a genetic component too because that sort mm -hmm. of proclivity runs in families but and mm -hmm. also there's a genetic underpinning to variation in agreeableness now yeah. you know if you have a tough kid like that and you're very agreeable the kid can run roughshod over you it's very difficult for you to do the socialization and so right. like one of the one of the problems that women face with men. So men are reliably less agreeable than women. That's cross-culturally. And it's true. It's even more true in egalitarian societies. And so women have to be agreeable because I think primarily because they have to take care of infants. And that's an extremely self-sacrificing occupation, especially when they're under nine months. But with men, they have to select men who are agreeable enough to be generous and kind and share but they have to be disagreeable enough to keep the real psychopaths and the, and the manipulators at bay. And so it's a chronic problem for the human race. Okay, yeah. so you're, you're doing all these jobs and you're seeing the politicking and, politicking and it's not going well for you. Yeah. And you decide to analyze the behavior of the people that are acting in these underground oppressive ways. And you're definitely right. gonna see that if, if, you're, if you're being pushed around a lot, you know, and so, you decided to make yeah. that an object of study. Yeah, um, you know, I wasn't, it's not so much that I was pushed around. Some of it was also just observing how other people were being treated. Yeah. I have this oh, idea yeah. that I talk about in the book that, you know, people will always wear the, the mask of being agreeable and friendly. Even the most psychotic boss will always know how to be somewhat charming and present themselves. But you look at how they treat other people when you're not observing them behind closed doors. And that's when some of their ugly behavior will come out. They kind of hide it very well from, from, from the public. So a lot of it was observing how other people were mistreated. And so when I worked mm -hmm. in Hollywood, you know, in some industries, I have to say some industries are a lot worse than others. So when you're working at that factory job that you're mentioning, people will tend to be kind of united and around a single purpose. There won't be much politicking going on. Yeah, there in an environment, an environment where Hollywood, so much of it is money and ego, et cetera. The well, level and, and the desire for fame, you yeah. know, and that's going to attract a disproportionate number. So it's the people that are are more likely to be the way that you describe are high in extroversion, yes. especially assertiveness, and they're yes. low in agreeableness. That's yes. kind of the personality disorder axis, high in extroverted assertiveness and low in agreeableness, especially compassion. And then if you add unconscientiousness to that, you got, a, you got someone who's bordering on psychopathic. Right. And they could still be high in openness. They could still be creative and intelligent, but they'd be manipulative as hell and callous. Yeah. 